Good morning. I'm Kathy Ryder. I'm board liaison for membership services this year. Boy, what a beautiful day. Oh, we needed this. Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Congregation. We are a religious community who commit ourselves to diversity. We hope to nourish human differences, those of gender, race, age, ability, sexual orientation, political views, culture, class, and religious belief. Welcome to all who treasure freedom of conscience in the search for truth. We promise to do our best to provide you with a spiritual home. We extend a special welcome to our visitors today. We hope you follow our Facebook page and to participate in Zoom and receive announcements about special events and our religious exploration classes, please sign up for our weekly email. There should be a link in the comments section on our Facebook page where you can sign up. I'd like to draw your attention to recent announcements. For those in person, they're printed on your order of service. There are links in the UUC newsletter and weekly UU connections for those watching online today. And I have one announcement. The flowers today are donated by Linda Marie Rogers in memory of her husband, Will Rogers. Thank you, Linda. And thank you all for joining us today. Good morning. I'm Debbie Brown. I'm a member of this congregation. I'm also a member of Eau Claire Women in Theater, known informally as Equit. And I'd like to invite you all to a performance we're giving here next Sunday at two o'clock, celebrating the centennial, plus almost two, of the passing of the 19th Amendment. Um, we will be telling you about the suffragists that helped win women the right to vote. So if you want any more information, you can talk to me after the service, but love to see you there next Sunday at two. Thank you.
Good morning. I'm Debbie Campbell, one of your worship associates today. My pronouns are she, her. Um, we're so glad you joined us this Sunday, whether in person or online. Uh, this is our choir's first time singing at the congregation for the first time in two years, which is really exciting. And it was beautiful to hear, so thank you. Um, also, following service, we'll be having our annual meeting and ask all members to please vote and stay. You can grab coffee and snacks before the meeting, and voting will happen both through Zoom and in person. And there's childcare available for anyone 12 and under. We'll begin today's service with these opening words a spacious welcome by Sherry Woodbury. Welcome who come in friendship, who long for genuine community. May you be graciously received here as your authentic self. Welcome who come in curiosity, full of questions or simply open. May you embrace wonder and encounter new delights. Welcome who come heavy with fatigue, weary from the troubles of the world or the troubles of your particular life. May you rest and be filled in the sacred space. Welcome who come with joy for flowing rivers and gentle breeze, for changing skies and great trees. May the grace of the world leave a lasting imprint in you. Welcome who come in thanks for the altruism of the earth and the gift of human care. May your grateful heart overflow and bless those around you. Come, let us celebrate together this wondrous life. Thank you. Good morning. Please say with me the words printed in your order of service for lighting the chalice. At this hour, in small towns and big cities, in single rooms and ornate sanctuaries, many of our sibling Unitarian Universalist congregations are also lighting a flaming chalice. As we light our chalice today, let us remember that we are part of a great community of faith. May this dancing flame inspire us to fill our lives with the Unitarian Universalist ideals of love, justice, and truth. A poem for you by Carl Sandburg, written a hundred years ago this year. The peace of great doors before you, wait at the, no at the knobs, at the panel of lungs, wait for the great hinges. The peace of great churches before you, where the players of loft pipe organs practice old lovely fragments alone. The peace of great books before you, Stains of pressed clover leaves on pages, bleach of the light of years held in leather. The peace of great prairies before you. Listen among wind players in cornfields, the wind learning over its oldest music. The peace of great seas before you. Wait on a hook of land, a rock footing for you. Wait in the salt wash the peace of great mountains before you, the sleep and the eyesight of eagles, sheet mist shadows, and the long look across. The peace of great hearts before you, valves of the blood of the sun, pumps of the strongest wants we cry. The peace of great silhouettes before you, shadow dancers alive in your blood now, alive and crying, let us out, let us out. The peace of great changes before you. Whisper, O oh beginners in the hills. Tumble, O oh cubs, tomorrow belongs to you. The peace of great loves before you. Rain, soak these roots. Wind, shatter the dry rot. Bars of sunlight, grips of the earth, hug these the peace of great ghosts before you, 
phantoms of the night gray eyes, ready to go to the fog star dumps, to the fire white doors. Yes, the peace of great phantoms before you. Phantom iron men, mothers of bronze, keepers of the lean, clean breeds. Hi, I'm Kathy Ryder again of uh, membership committee. And I'd like to call up the other membership uh, committee members and our new joinees today, please. New members, please come forward. Thank you. As we welcome you today, we are so thankful that you're joining our community and you'll be enjoying all the fun things that our community does. And hopefully you'll join in with all kinds of uh, religious exploration and chalice circles and fun things like that. Fun ways to explore your spiritual path. So as I call your name, come up and sign our membership book and light a candle. Um, Anna Mae Tempest. Lena Mavis. Maria Bergevin. Eric Canton. And his wife, Allison Beamer. Wonderful. We also want to mention two people who have signed, but were not able to be here today, Renee and Mike Summer. And today, Nicole Kazarek was going to sign, but is ill today, so couldn't make it. Um, now is the time that we will pull out our new member ceremony inserts from the bulletin, and I'll start. Today, as we welcome new members into our congregation, it's a good time to remind ourselves of the goals we hold in common and the experiences we share that nourish our spirits. The mission of the Unitarian Universalist congregation is to provide a liberal religious environment that promotes personal and spiritual growth for adults and children in a caring community and fosters actions in the world that reflect our Unitarian Universalist principles. We celebrate your presence in our midst. We look forward to welcoming with you, worshiping with you, to shaping this community together with you. We invite you to participate fully with your convictions and actions, your love and play and gifts, your sorrow and laughter and song, your questions and tears. Freely joining this community, we seek to share the fellowship here 
and join our resources with others to continue a tradition that fosters freedom, reason, love, and responsibility. This is a core to the mission of the congregation and the principles and purposes of the Unitarian Universalist Association. We join to affirm and promote the inherent worth and dignity of every person, justice, equity, and compassion in human relations, acceptance of one another, and encouragement to spiritual growth in our congregations, a free and responsible search for truth and meaning, the right of conscience, and the use of democratic process within our congregations and in society at large. The goal of world community with peace, liberty, and justice for all. Respect for the independent realm of all existence, which we are a part. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you to all members and friends who donate regularly in support of this congregation and the work that we do. You help us make a difference in the world and in people's lives. Our 50-50 share the plaint recipient for May is the Wellness Shack. Scan to donate or text to give at 84321. On-site donations can be made in the donation drop box in the gathering room or given to a greeter when the basket is passed. Please indicate on your giving envelope whether it is for a pledge payment, 50-50, or other fund. With gratitude for the abundance in our lives, we give to help people in need and to support the work of this congregation.
Please join with me in saying the congregational response for giving in your order of service. From you, I receive, to you, I give. Together we share, and from this we live. Please join me when I come to the part that says, we let go of who we ought to be and embrace who we are. Because there have been times when shame has crushed our ability to be wholehearted, we let go of who we ought to be and embrace who we are. Because we have not always had the courage to be imperfect, we let go of who we ought to be and embrace who we are. Because we have struggled to have compassion for ourselves and others, we let go of who we ought to be and embrace who we are. Because we have been afraid of our own vulnerability, we let go of who we ought to be and embrace who we are. Because we are sometimes too scared to live authentically, we let go of who we ought to be and embrace who we are. Because we want to be wholehearted people, confident in our worthiness and our belonging, we let go of who we ought to be and embrace who we are. So this Sunday, I thought I'd talk about what I know. <laughs> so often we think about what we don't know. There are so many questions and concerns and the pandemic turned our worlds upside down. And I don't know about all of you, but it became very important to me to claim what I know, things I could hold on to that would center me and ground me. And one of those things that I know is this congregation centered me and grounded me in ways that grew me and stretched me and technology grew me and stretched me. Being in my basement and uh, preaching to boxes like the Brady Bunch <laughs> grew me and stretched me. Trying to stream on Facebook that first Sunday, we were home from the pandemic and I had my kids reading, doing readings, and, <laughs> you know, it's, it's a long journey home, and that, that's what we sang about today, and you know, this place for me has become my home. I've been here 12 years now. Um, it was uh, July 2010 when we moved here, and my kids, uh, Aaron was in 4K, and he uh, used to run up here and try and light the chalice, and... <laughs> And now he's taller than I am. And uh, Kendra had a different name when we first came. And this congregation has embraced their journey and they're becoming fully who they are. And I like to feel like I am still becoming who I am, just like all of you are. You know, we're on that journey home. And what is home? It's a place where we let go of what we ought to be and embrace who we are. You know, we ought to be successful and productive. And well, <laughs> I think some of the most productive times I've had is sitting across from somebody with a cup of coffee and figuring out who they are and who I am in the process. Last night, we had 20 people downstairs playing ticket to ride games. And amazingly, I had never played that game somehow. <laughs> I know people are shaking the head at me like, what? I thought you were a true nerd, but no, but I'm not ashamed. <laughs> no. I learned how to play Ticket to Ride and um, Nate Otto's uh, young child beat the pants off of all the adults in the, in the room. And um, it was joyous to be together, to eat popcorn, <laughs> to play games. And that's what we're doing, is we're figuring out how to be in the world. Who are we now? So what I know is that I need to have positive vulnerability. So coming up here and instead of um, quoting a lot of things, 
Um, I've come up here to share, to share, share my heart, share my journey. And I didn't write anything. So I'm sharing this today completely extemporaneously. And, and that's vulnerability, but it's trusting that we hold each other and that we can say the words that we need to say. And I think letting go of shame is one of the most powerful things that I have done as a woman and as a person. Um, as Unitarian Universalist, one of the most important things that called me to be a UU was the idea of letting go of original sin. I think that's one of the worst things that organized religion has done to this planet and to people, to give them shame and tell them that they were born in sin, that they have to do these things to get right with God. Well, the sacred that I know tells me that I was born right the first time. And, and I, you know, watching all this going on in our country that is devaluing LGBTQ persons, people of color, people, <laughs> people's rights. And it is places like these where we shake, shake the tree. We shake the halls of justice and we say, no, <laughs> people are worthy, no. You don't get to take their rights away or ban their books or tell them to shut up and sit down and be a good little person because you are bright and beautiful and our children are bright and beautiful and we need a free and just and loving world. And after a lot of years of politics <laughs> that have told us not that, not that message. I wanna be a part of a free faith that tells us that we have the power to make a difference, that we have the power to be ourselves and be loved in all of our flaws and all of our vulnerability. I want to hear children crying in our sanctuary and for someone to go, you know, say, it's okay. I was a parent too. <laughs> I want, there to be accessibility in our doors, which we have. And I, I want this to be a place where people can come and, and, and all of their isness, is that a word? <laughs> all, all of their personness. And one of the things that I feel that I know is that service beyond my own little world, my own little id is also incredibly important to me. To be a part of something larger than myself, to make a difference. I know a lot of our members volunteer, their teachers, their caregivers, their parents, their, they do so much in our community in each in our small ways. And to be a part of something larger than ourself calls us to our best self. It calls us into relationship with ourselves and the planet and people around us. And that's one of the most powerful things about serving this congregation for 12 years that I found is that um, when I first came to town, I had all these ideas, you know, and I got called as um, a lifespan minister um, is my title. And um, we did not have an art, a religious exploration person. Um, we had a religious exploration committee. And um, it was the first time um, that they kind of made that leap of faith and tried to figure out, you know, how are we going to have this uh, person serve? And so we, we, we came up with all sorts of ideas to try and make it work. And, um, and then the next year, we hired <laughs> a religious exploration person. This congregation was built on the ideals of religious exploration. Um, the Hirsches and the Larsons and the Peters, they sat around a table, put their babies in the middle, <laughs> and, and they created a space that welcomed questions. And you can see that echoing now in this time where, um, 
you have youth coming up and sharing their identities and you have leadership. We have a, a young adult represent, re representative now on the board, which is powerful. You know, we need to spread our power across our congregation. We don't have a Pope, you know, <laughs> I could put on my Pope hat, but I think you'd probably laugh. <laughs> we don't have a Bishop. We have what's called congregational polity, which means every vote makes a difference. Every vote voice makes a difference. That's why a lot of times I'm always surprised when people are like, this is my minister. Because sometimes in UU circles, you know, the minister is, uh, 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 you know, important. But, but every voice is important. And that's why we share the service with so many people. And today we will have our annual meeting and it's gonna be the first time we've done it online and in person. And we're gonna have voting by poll on Zoom. We'll have voting in person here. I mean, look at us. <laughs> we, we, it, we've grown into the 21st century here and yet we are still who we are. We are still this tiny but mighty and maybe not so tiny anymore congregation that stands up, that speaks out, that shows up when we're needed. And I believe that if we don't show up, if we don't have this place, if we don't share our love, you know, what would it be like? You know, what, what would Eau Claire be like without the UU? You know, um, we did a, 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 a memorial yesterday um, for Will Rogers. We had about, I don't know, 70, 80, almost 100 people here. And people who had never maybe even been in our congregation, you know, from out of town, friends. And um, people came up to me and, and they were saying, I love your hangings and, and the chakra colors. And your, <laughs> I didn't know we had chakra colors in our, in our hanging, but... But, you know, and I love this beautiful old building and your rainbow flag. And, and um, you, know, I, I've, you know, I've seen you all on the news. And, and so, and, and during the week, we have three AA groups that share our space. People come here and see, you know, that they're welcome. We have an LGBTQ AA group that meets here. The Sierra Club meets here. We've offered our space to the LGBTQ youth group. So when, we're, when we say we're a welcoming congregation, we live out those values, those things that matter. And during the pandemic, sometimes it felt like we were alone. We didn't have each other didn't have our coffee hour, our choir. I mean, okay, I'm not gonna cry. <laughs> you know, just, you know I, I just saw uh, somebody today I haven't seen in a long time and I uh, got offered a hug and I just, you know, that to me is also coming home. You know, knowing that someone who had surgery recently and we're able to provide rides, that's coming home knowing that there's going to be babies coming and we're going to have meal trains and baby dedications, and that too is coming home. And I just want to thank you for having faith in yourselves and, and faith in this community that we can provide an ongoing tradition, but that it's a living tradition. It changes. You know, we, have, we, we did our seven principles. Well, if the UUA votes on an eighth principle, we'll say that one too, <laughs> because life keeps moving on, you know? You know, watch Star Trek, it'll tell you that. <laughs> you never know, never know what's gonna happen. But I think we'll still be there. You know, I, I think our faith is so relevant and it can be so flexible and so sturdy that we will make the journey into the future. And I hear from a lot of my colleagues that they are afraid that their traditions will break, that they will not be able to offer people what they need. 
And I think it comes down to authenticity. You know, are you serving the truth of your people? And when we say, come, come, whoever you are, wanderer, worshiper, lover of leaving, it's like Rumi. We, we, you know, atheist, Buddhist, Christian, seeker, and it's not a bar joke, like I said last Sunday. <laughs> um, so when I was a little girl, and I've told this story to some of you, that's the, that's the joy of being around for 12 years now that I <laughs> repeat my stories sometimes, but there, we have a lot of new people in our halls now. And so when I was a little girl, I um, would preach to my stuffed animals. I had a bunny and a bear, and I would line them up. And I would pull out my book of common prayer because I was an, an Episcopalian then. And I had a hard time saying that word, just like we have a hard time saying Unitarian Universalist sometimes. But I would preach to them. My, my dad is an Episcopal priest and my, my aunt and my stepmom. And I would, I would do that. And then I baptized them all in my sink because I wanted them to go to heaven. I didn't want to be in a heaven without my stuffed animals. And I believed that my dog was going to be saved. I, I baptized him. <laughs> I was an early universalist. <laughs> and um, I even baptized, uh, much to my dad's uh, chagrin, a, a boyfriend in high school <laughs> in my sink in the house. Um, but I felt very empowered. <laughs> And I think, you know, these journeys of who we are becoming and who we are start early, right? And maybe you can look back to your own life and what are the seeds that have started that maybe you wanted to be a teacher, maybe you wanted to be a counselor or, or um, to work with um, bookkeeping or wh whatever it is that makes your heart sing. And um, sometimes we go on journeys like this. You know, I've had a lot of different careers before I came to be a UU minister. But people told me girls can't be ministers. And some people would have told me LGBTQ people can't be ministers. Yes, we can. <laughs> and yes, you can. And that's why we are the prophethood of all believers. You know, we have the gifts of Laurel Kiefer and Julia Brown, and we have the gifts of Bobby Kutta and Rob Kutta and so many people who get up here and share. We now have a child care provider um, that we hired recently, and they have uh, they and he pronouns. So I hope you'll welcome uh, Jacob, who's downstairs in our nursery this summer we'll be hiring a uh, tech person hopefully and um, that is a huge huge deal our tech committee has worked so hard with our worship committee to get us through all this and so our journey home keeps going but we want to remember the people that we aren't seeing and the people that who can't be here and that's why we have technology when we did um, the memorial of Harry Harder. Um, his best friend, Alan Jackson, was able to watch that memorial at the Classic because of our technology. You know, the fact, and he's in hospice, the fact that he could be a part of that was powerful. So as we imagine our way going forward, our journey, you know, what will it be? Who will it include? How can we keep being a welcoming congregation and challenge ourselves. You know, right now, sometimes people struggle with pronouns, like what, what do I say? What do I do? <laughs> or we struggle with how to be anti-racist, you know, or, or, or we struggle to be good people because life is hard, <laughs> stressful, stressful. We let go of who we ought to be and we embrace who we are. Would you say that with me? We let go of who we ought to be and we embrace who we are. 
Because who you are is lovable, beautiful, and deserves standing up for. Blessed be. Thank you for sharing from your heart, Julie. Everybody, this is our minister. Please say with me the words printed in your order of service for extinguishing the chalice. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. Our clothing, closing word, closing words, sorry, come from Eric Williams. Blessed is the path on which you travel. Blessed is the body that carries you upon it. Blessed is your heart that has heard the call. Blessed is your mind that discerns the way. Blessed is the gift that you will receive by going. Truly blessed is the gift that you will become on the journey. May you go forth in peace. <laughs>